Hello, Nick here, back to talk about Big Brother 26. As you may have noticed, I'm coming to you from a new location. Just temporary, I'm on vacation for the week. Um, so yeah, my last stream was on Thursday. A lot has gone down since then, including an eviction, and an HOH, and a veto competition. So, got a lot of stuff to talk about. So... Make sure I'm ready for it. Alright. So, before we get to the eviction, let's go back just a little bit. Um, Kenny tells Angela that basically he's come around. And he says that he is not throwing the AI arena. He is in it to win it. And I'm like, okay, thank you, Kenny. It's stupid to give up for a guy you just met, so thank you for actually getting your head back in the game. Now on to the episode itself. Uh, first of all, the edit, once again, trying to make Matt look like a golden boy, like he had, like he did nothing wrong, and that Angela's just picking on him for no reason, which is what the casuals seem to think. Like, y you cannot shake their impression of Angela. They are like, oh, she's evil. She's a Karen. She's a bully. She should be disqualified. Like, they say that her crazy eyes comment was racist because Matt is half Filipino, but... I mean... I... Listen, I'm always on the lookout for this kind of thing. Like, when I think something goes too far in a racial sense. I don't think there was a racial intent in Angela's words. And also, the thumbnail for my very first stream, um, at least after the first episode, uh, he did have crazy eyes. Like, he just made crazy faces in general, but it was especially in the eyes. But yeah, the edit's just trying to make him look more like a golden boy and trying to make Kimo look more alone than he was. Like, they weren't really showing the fact that Matt was, in fact, the target. I guess they wanted the casuals to feel more sad for him for when he ends up getting evicted. If he ends up getting evicted. Well, I mean, obviously there was the AI arena. He could have won that and saved himself. But in the event that he did leave, then the casuals would make him look like a victim. Or would think he's a victim. And also, it made people look a lot more hesitant to vote Matt out. They're all just like, well, we can't go against the house. I'm like, you are the house. Matt is not the house. Like, just talk to people and you'll see a lot of people want to get him out. Just saying. So we get to the AI arena. And a lot of people have been wondering, what is this even going to entail? What kind of competition is it going to be? It turns out it was a mental competition. Which may not have been the most equitable because Matt is kind of a dope. But I digress. Um... So, the challenge was, it was like Glitch in the System, I think was the name of it. So the three nominees, Matt, Kimo, and Kenny, they have to watch looped videos of all the house guests, and they have to find the one who appears the most. And they have two minutes to figure it out, like it's playing on a loop for two minutes. So that's the time it takes them to figure it out. They all lock in with different answers. Um... Kimo says Quinn, Kenny says Joseph, and Matt says t -Core. Now, personally, I was going through a couple names. I thought it was, like, maybe it's Joseph, or maybe it's Lisa, maybe it's Rubina. But the correct answer was Quinn. So, Kimo got it right, and he won, and there was much rejoicing, like... There was some debate over whether people wanted Matt to go more or wanted Kenny to go more, but everyone was in agreement. We want Kimo to stay. So Kimo won the veto. Everyone was excited. Even the people in the house were excited. Like, MJ had a vested interest in Matt winning that competition, and even she was happy for Kimo. So, yeah. Kimo has saved himself, and now Matt and Kenny have to quickly do some campaigning. Or not. Yeah, this was handled very awkwardly. Like, 
They were trying to go for probably a double eviction type of live episode with like that live scrambling, but they all just kind of stood around the couches and like, like Julie told them to start campaigning and they both just said their, their speeches. But Julie's like, no, maybe you should pull each other into, into a room and start strategizing there. You got 60 seconds to do it. I'm like, come on, Julie, there isn't enough time at this point. Like this was not explained to them clearly how it was supposed to work. And also, while they're all gathered around, you got you still got Cedric and Chelsea in their big computer chip costumes that are blocking half the half the cameras. And then when we actually get to the vote, you get Joseph standing in the hall for no reason, like Derek F. So this was a truly awkward live episode. Oh yeah, and Julie randomly called Matt's speech biblical. Like, his official one. When they were actually supposed to make their pleas to the house. Their final pleas. Uh, she wouldn't be Julie Chen Moonves if she didn't make it awkwardly religious. But, we do get the votes. Mackenzie, Leah, and Lisa vote to keep Matt. They vote to evict Kenny. Mackenzie and Leah were kind of expected. Lisa was kind of a surprise because it's like she really wants to vote with the House. So when she voted for... When she voted to evict Kenny, I'm like, oh my god, did the vote actually flip back onto Kenny? But no, Lisa's just... Just Lisa. Everyone else voted to evict Matt, so he is evicted 8-3 to three because Cedric and Chelsea couldn't vote. So there were only... Uh, only 11 votes cast instead of the usual 13 for this point. And uh, personally, I think it was good that he was voted out. I mean, yes, he did lead to drama with Angela, and that would have continued. But at the same time, I couldn't handle much more of him getting a, a golden boy victim at it. Like, already I am worried he's going to win America's Favorite Player. Despite being the first boot. Like, that is how favorable of an edit he got. Um, so the, the feeds came on surprisingly fast after the episode. Uh, everyone's just still really buzzing about Chemo winning. They're all like, oh, we were so proud of you. Like, everyone was freaking out, and Kimo's like, everyone in the audience freaked out because he could hear, well, he could hear Julie, so by extension, he could hear the audience. So, yeah. That was probably a good little confidence booster for Kimo, just to know that people have actually been on his side. Like, he was saying in the diary room that, like, I'm kind of feeling a little bit alone here, but he he's more popular than he realized, so... I'm thinking, okay, we'll let this guy feel a little more confident now. That's good. Because I like him. And everyone likes him. And he's on my draft team, so I want him to do well. I see I have one viewer. Hello. I just noticed. I don't know how long you've been here, but hello. Um, Chelsea talks to Tikor. She says that, well, Mackenzie's promising to be more open. She should have been. She should have been doing that already. Like, just because Matt's gone, now suddenly she wants to build her connections. Like, she should have been doing that in the first place. She also says that if Lisa wins, she will go crazy. So, yeah. Lisa still... Not the most liked person in the house right now. But we'll talk more about that later. Uh, Quinn tells T-Core that it'd be great if Tucker wins because he'll put up Lisa, he'll put up Kenny, and either Mackenzie or Leah. And in that scenario, Kenny would go. Leah tells T-Core that Angela is the house target. And I'm like, it's a little unclear if that's the case. Leah should want the shield, but she's still kind of taking Matt's exit a little personally. Which, 
I gotta say, still based on everything I saw from her preseason, like I don't hate Leah, but I'm definitely a little disappointed in her. Like she is still too hung up on this one guy, and like that was not what we were expecting from her. But like he's gone now. Hopefully she gets out of it and starts actually playing the game a little more actively. We will see if she does. Uh, Mackenzie talks to Rubina about her path forward without Matt. Mackenzie says that she is gunning for the HOH. And Rubina says, I'll throw it. So that's now at least five people that have said they want to throw this HOH. The three C's, Camp Cedric Chelsea, Gwen, and now Rubina. So, the odds of um, Mackenzie or Leah winning are definitely getting stronger. You also got to figure Kenny's probably gunning for it because he's not thrilled with Angela at this point. So the feeds go down for the HOH competition. And uh, remember how I said Chelsea was one of the people trying to throw it? Well, she won. She didn't really mean to, but apparently, from what I've gathered, it came down to her and Leah, and she didn't want to risk Leah winning, so she just she just had to stay in it until Leah was out, and before she knew it, she was HOH. I mean, I think Chelsea would have been fine if Leah had won, but Chelsea has a few more interests in the house. Than Leah does, and Leah would have gone for one of Chelsea's interests, but not Chelsea herself. And probably not the, the three C's in general. Or really, the Pentagon in general. So Lisa is going up, but she isn't 100% sure of who else she should put up. Lisa is the target. And then, she says that Kenny asked to go up. Kenny volunteered, and I'm like, Bro, you are killing me right now with this. Like, you got to stop throwing in the towel, buddy. Like, you don't, like, just because you're the old guy doesn't mean you have to be the season's block star. You know, you don't have to be rock star. You don't have to be Brittany from BB23. You don't have to be Johnny Mac. You don't have to be Victoria. You can just play the game and try to keep yourself off it. Maybe you, you will end up on the block, but at least you can say you tried. Like, just stop making me annoyed that you're from my state's capital city, okay? And by the way, he, I mean, he might live in Boston, but he's not a Boston cop. He's an Everett cop. Everett is next to Boston. Just saying. Uh, Quinn is uh, getting yet another group together, because, you know doesn't have enough plates spinning already, apparently. This group is consisting of Chemo, t and Rabina. To Quinn's credit, this is actually a group that sounds like it could have potential, or at least could have had more potential if it had formed early on, but now, with so many things going on, it's hard to tell if this one will stick, but this group does make sense. Tucker tells Chelsea he wants Lisa out, because of course he does. He's willing to go as far as winning the veto just to lock in the noms, just to ensure, well, it wasn't Lisa, so... She just has the AI arena, and if that doesn't work out for her, then she goes. And uh, Chelsea tells him that she thinks Mackenzie has a power. Dot, dot, dot. Sure enough, Mackenzie tells Chelsea about her power. And Chelsea already wants to flush the powers. But she learns about it, and she gets conflicted when she hears what it is. Being America's veto, she won't be able to control who the replacement nominee is. And it could be one of her interests, again. And Chelsea's trying to have an HOH that protects her own interests. But now, Mackenzie has become one of those interests, or at least 
not using Mackenzie's power is in her interest. But at the same time, she it's like, you know, by not nominating her, you're leaving a power in the game, which could theoretically screw you over down the line. Personally, because Leah is Mackenzie's closest ally, I would vote for Leah to participate, like, to be the replacement nominee to participate in the AI arena. But, uh, yeah, that's just me. I don't know if it would work out that way. Not with, not with the power that casuals have nowadays. Like, if they can propel Cameron to AFP last year, then anything's possible. Uh, Quinn, t -Core, and Chemo talk. They agree that Cam is a threat who could dominate the game. And yes, he is. He does look a lot like, you know, Xavier. Does look a lot like what Jared could have been, but wasn't because he was just so unbelievably bad at the game. So yeah, they definitely have their eye on Cam. Also, Joseph is somewhat involved in this discussion, but not really. Um, then Quinn and Leah talk. This conversation's very flirty, but Leah is kind of playing the flirty game. I'm hearing comparisons to uh, Allison Irwin, who I believe was on BB4. She lost to June. I did not watch that season. Quick reminder, I've only seen BB17 onward. So... That's what I've gathered. Like That's the name I keep seeing coming up. So Leah is just flirting with everybody, and now she's doing it with Quinn. And he is flirting back, because he really wants to work with her, and she wants to work with him in return. She confesses the BS Alliance, the barbershop group. She also admits her relationships with Brooklyn and Lisa. Leah agrees to talk to Chemo and t -Core more. And he admits his final two with chemo. I'm like, okay, Quinn. You... Quinn is starting to tell a lot of people a lot of things. The biggest of which being probably the first big thing he told, telling Angela about his power. Like, that's a powder keg waiting to explode. That may or may not have been a sassy sip. Um, the flurry lasts for a while, but then finally she does get serious for a second. She's like, okay, I want to make sure we have a, a strictly platonic game-based relationship. And Quinn's like, yes, of course. From there, she starts talking more strategy with more people to get out of being seen as a threat. But she also tells Brooklyn that, about all the information that Quinn gave her, so... Quinn starting to get found out. He is on my draft team, so I'm a little concerned about that, but at the same time, he has me blocked on Twitter, so I don't care too much. Anyway, Quinn and Leah act out a conversation around t -Core to try and bring her and Chemo into a group, but Leah also suggests Cam and Brooklyn for it, and it's like, okay, might be doing too much here. t -Core just kind of stays quiet through this, as t -Core does. t -Core is like a church mouse. She doesn't say much. She just sort of soaks it all in. Uh, Chelsea is talking with Joseph. They are weighing the pros and cons of nominating Angela. Joseph is concerned that nominating her would jeopardize their game, because Angela is a shield for them. And this is what I've been saying. Someone as chaotic as her, you want as a target in front of you. Like, there is no way I would want Angela out at this point in time. Dot, dot, dot. There's more. Later on. Angela is basically expecting Chelsea to put her up. She says, it'd be okay. It means I get to compete this week in the veto, and if that doesn't work out, the AI arena. Chelsea says the worry is Lisa winning the veto after nominating her. So, like, 
she's entertaining the possibility of a Lisa backdoor, like Angela did with Matt. Angela says that it could work as her, Kenny, and either Lisa or Mackenzie. But of course, Chelsea knows Mackenzie's power, and that isn't really too good. If Chelsea had told Angela that Mackenzie has the power, that would have been pretty big for Angela, because she then would have known both the people who have powers. And that is definitely something she could have used. But Chelsea does not blab. And after the conversation, Chelsea looks at the camera and says, Angela, Kenny, Lisa are going up. Lisa is the target. And it's like, okay, this seems like it might just be a rather straightforward week. And then other stuff happens. Um, Leah kind of volunteers Cam as a pawn. And Cam is brought into the discussion. And he's like, okay. If you have to. I'm on board. And it's like, um, you sure about this? This is literally what happened to Pooch. He volunteered. Well, okay. Cam was volunteered. Pooch volunteered himself. Well, technically, Pooch volunteered himself as the replacement nominee to sit next to Taylor. But he got nominated. He lost the veto. And Taylor lost the veto, so they ended up next to each other on eviction night. And they decided, you know what? We can afford to keep Taylor a little longer. Let's get rid of Pooch right now. And Cam definitely looks like a bigger threat than Pooch ever was. So, it's like, history might repeat itself. We might go, we might change the name. Like, that was called Pooching Yourself. And now this season it might be Camming Yourself. And as a result of this, like, usually this kind of thing, when someone does volunteer, it is sort of a trust-building thing. Chelsea trusts Cam less as a result of this, because he was so swayed by Leah. So. Mm-hmm. Chelsea goes to talk to Cedric about Cam. She's called to the diary room to make her nominations. As she's going, Cedric says, you can put me up. And then, as she's trying to go into the diary room, Angela stops her. But Chelsea's just like, oh, I, I have to, I have to go, sorry, okay, this door won't open, okay, sorry, bye. It's kind of how that went. So, everyone's like, what is about to happen here? Ultimately, Chelsea sticks to her plan. She nominates Angela, Kenny, and Lisa. But Chelsea does admit she doesn't trust Cam because, like I said, Leah talked him into being a pawn. Uh, Quinn talks to Cam. Wait. Hold on. I wrote Q talks to Cam, but I'm not sure if I meant this as he's talking to Cam the player, or if he's talking to the camera. I think what I meant to write was that he's talking to the camera. Um, but either way, he thought Cedric was testing him when he said that he volunteered as a pawn. So, Quinn is kind of losing trust in people, also left and right. Lisa talks to Chelsea. She asks her, am I the target? Chelsea says, no. Lisa says, well, then you better make sure the house knows I'm not the target. I'm like, Lisa, this isn't the way to do it. You're, you're strong-arming people. And you kind of did this a little bit last week when you had the veto. Except right now, you're just a nominee. You have no power. 
you have the least power in the house because you're actually the target. So it's like, you've got to stop making people feel uncomfortable when you're talking to them. Um, Quinn, Joseph, and Chemo talk. Joseph is willing to cut Angela loose by now, because then they could reform the Collective without her. Actually, not a bad move. Because, you know, Angela is kind of a liability. Hold on, why, why do I have two notifications? What, what is this? Uh, something about skipped frames. Yeah, I've, I've been noticing that I'm getting a little wonky. But it is what it is. Yeah, that is... That is ugly. But yeah, Angela is becoming more and more of a liability to the people she's working with, and that is only going to continue. But we'll, we'll get to that. Chelsea and Cedric talk about Cam and Leah. Cedric says that Leah could be the renom, and the, the renom if need be, and Chelsea says that Cam could be. And I gotta say, I really thought the three C's were gonna be tighter than this. I didn't think they'd be turning on each other week two. But... Oh my god. Skip frames detected 100%. Over the last two minutes. Yikes. I'm sorry. This is probably not fun to watch. I just I just hope I sound okay. Um or was I? So yeah, uh Chelsea is entertaining the thought of the replacement nominee being Cam. Whereas Cedric probably made the more logical decision of, uh, I mean, suggestion of Leah. Like, yes, it would be kind of tricky for for Chelsea to nominate Mackenzie at this point, but Leah is fair game, I think. I just think Chelsea trying to take out Cam right now, it might be too big a move. And, like, Chelsea would be harming her own interests, because Cam is not against her. He's getting closer to Leah, true, but he's not against Chelsea or Cedric. I just, I feel like Cam is the most loyal to the three C's at this point. Oh, God. The frame rate is really bad. I'm so sorry to anyone watching this. It's probably the lighting. I just, I have a lamp over in the corner on the other side of the room. That's all I got. Maybe next time I do this, I'll, I'll switch, I'll switch my spot. I'll sit on the other side of the room. Maybe the lighting will be better and I can actually make this work. So, I'm just, I'm just going to keep on powering through. Um... Kenny and Lisa talk. They want Angela out. And Kenny seems to have woken up a bit because he would have put Quinn and Joseph on the block to break them up, potentially. And he thinks Mackenzie has the power. It's a good read, but it's not so good telling this to Lisa because... She could use it against him if she realizes she can do that. Again, Lisa doesn't seem to know much about this game other than vote with the house.
Uh, Chelsea tells Brooklyn about Mackenzie's power. So, you know, as worried as I am about Quinn's power getting outed, Mackenzie's has been outed a lot more. Which is good, because her power is definitely definitely the inferior one. Just, Quinn's power getting outed would really take away some of the impact. But it would still be just, he seizes power, and everyone would know it was him. It's just like, well, y'all know, so I might as well just do it. Just, I'm sure he's trying to get to week four to use it, because he, he's got it for four weeks. Um, so, t tells Cedric that Angela clocked them, Chelsea, and Cam as a group. And they find this a little... Mm, concerning. They They don't like the implications there. And to be fair, this is the Kyle situation. But there is a little bit of a difference, because now there is actually some truth to it. Of 75% truth, at least. The three Cs are a pretty tight-knit group, or at least they were until Chelsea started to lose faith in Cam. So, but still, they just feel like Angela making this connection is like, hmm, I don't know if that's a good look. Also, well, first of all, the, the three Cs did want to bring in T-Core. Second of all, Angela is seeing everybody together. She is, she's like, she sees any group of people hanging out, and she's like, they're an alliance. And she just panics about it, so. I, I get why they are worried about the implications here, but I honestly think we can just talk this up to Angela's endless paranoia. Um, Chelsea and Brooklyn talk again. They agree Lisa is the target. Brooklyn wants Kenny as the backup target because Angela is gunning for Mackenzie's side of the house. And they're pretty cool with Angela. And they discuss Joseph being a pawn if Lisa were to win the veto. And honestly, I think Joseph might be a good renom in general because... He'd kind of be in the same position as Chemo. No one really wants him out. And just if he were to win the AI arena, people would be pretty excited about that. So I think Joseph is probably a smart play because he's not someone that would leave. So feeds go down. Veto competition happens. At this point in time, I'm thinking, I want Angela to win, because I'm not ready to lose her, because she does bring something unique to this season. So Angela's who I wanted to win. It's not Angela. It's not Lisa. It's Kenny. Kenny won the veto. How about that? Let's just let's just break this down because there have been seven competitions played so far, and here's who who has won. Uh, four women have won, including the 50 year old woman. Of the three men who won, one of them is the 52 year old man, and then we also have the gay guy, Chemo, and the nerd, Quinn. So, this is definitely a different season from last. These competitions are actually a little more interesting, because you don't know who's going to win. Oh, I forgot to mention, Brooklyn and Joseph got picked for the veto again. They were the two picks last week, and and they got picked again. So, that's a little, that's a little wild. I mean, we've had two veto competitions, and a gr grand total of seven people have played in them. Like, we just swapped out Chemo for Joseph. I mean, Chemo for... 
It's Chelsea this week. Chelsea couldn't play last week. Hold on. Let me see if I can actually do something. Ugh. Too many options. Forget it. It seems to be getting a little better, but I'm still getting notifications about it. But yeah, anyway. Kenny wins the veto. He's not going to be acting like a quitter anymore. Because before... He wasn't getting his way, and he's just like, I'm going to take my ball and go home. But now, he's actually winning stuff. He's actually in a position of power. So I guarantee he's finally going to start enjoying himself. Like, he wasn't having fun when he was losing. But now that he's winning, suddenly he's going to think he's the he's the top dog, I bet. Uh, Chelsea plans to build her relationship with Kenny by talking game with him to try and work out who should be the replacement nominee. Finally, we're on to the big one. Angela has an argument with Quinn. Now, again, Angela, at any time, can bury Quinn. She knows his power. Angela's trying to find out who did you tell, and he says he told t just to check in with Angela about seeing her in a big group, and Angela just doesn't believe him. And Quinn's like, okay, well, that's the truth. Like, you can tell at this point that Quinn is getting tired of Angela's nonsense. t joins the conversation, but that's about all we got, because the feeds keep cutting anytime anyone even mentions this conversation. Like, the most we got was t being like, how does a grown woman... And it cuts away. So, like, apparently Angela was still going off. And I'm gonna be honest. Angela is starting to turn into a Karen. And she's doing more harm than good. Like, she is not the target this week. But she seems to be doing everything in her power to become the target. So, I don't know what Angela's thinking. I mean, she's probably not. She's just freaking out. She's clearly a very emotional person. And even if she doesn't go this week, then she just has more people coming for her next. Because I, I don't think Angela's playing a winning game right now. I think she's playing a very messy game. The kind of game that's, like, too chaotic and it gets people to turn on you. Like Izzy. Okay, so that's all I got for my notes. Now I'm gonna check online, see if, uh... First of all, see if I can find out more context. See if they've allowed any conversations about this blow-up, or if they're just trying to just hide it all so they can completely control it in the edit. Like, we just have to make Angela look bad at all costs. Like, that's what it seems like. You know, that's what they were doing when it was her versus Matt. Like, they're like, Angela's completely in the wrong. Matt did nothing wrong. Matt's perfect. We love him. He's our golden boy. Angela's just this crazy old lady. And like, Angela may be this crazy old lady, but let us see it. Let us decide for ourselves. Stop trying to control the narrative. Like, people are paying good money for live feeds. We get they're going to go down sometimes, but they should only go down for competitions and meetings. They shouldn't go down anytime there's an actual fight in the house. Like, people were so pumped that they got to watch last week's fight with Angela. You think we don't want to watch it again? And besides, as the edit proved, you can still get people to think Angela's the villain.
Yep. It's just still seems to be more. All the talk I'm seeing is just about how they're cutting the feeds constantly. It's like Paramount, CBS, Fly on the Wall, Broadner, whoever needs to hear this. We're adults. We can handle it. We're going to discuss it. And we may be passionate in our discussions. But we we deserve to talk about it. We deserve to see it so that we can have an accurate take. You shouldn't just keep cutting the feeds all willy-nilly like this. Because it causes people to lose trust. And that causes you to lose viewers. And that causes the remaining viewers to get punished more, with more stuff taken away. All right, let's check BB updates to see if uh, see if anything's being shared right now. Oh, BB Updates is being sassy. Feeds are back since there is no longer anything interesting happening in the house. This is why BB Updates is the best. When they break, you know it's serious. Alright, I'll check the hashtag, see if, uh... See if there's anything anyone's saying. I gotta retweet that from BB Updates. That's too good. Oh, apparently Angela did tell Lisa to wipe that smirk off her face. I don't know if she said this to her face or not, but... Yeah, I couldn't really tell. Okay. Just found this one from BB Feeds Fairy. t -Core and Kimo walk silently by Angela, eating her avocado, and Angela makes a sour face and starts to cry more. I think it's all kind of starting to collapse on Angela at this point. Tombs says they're trying to prevent another Kyle situation. Meanwhile, we've all seen Angela go insanely paranoid about anyone at all meetings anywhere, which is true. I mean, could that be what it's about? Like, Angela's been accused of looking at things in, in a, under a racial lens? I mean, is that what we're doing here? This is, uh... Is that why she's crying? Because she doesn't want to be associated that way? I don't know. This is this is pure speculation at this point. I have no idea, because can't see anything. And if it is another Kyle situation, we probably won't see it. They, they showed it because they had to, because... That was out there. This one, I feel like they can... They're trying to... They're going to try to bury it. And it's like, why bother? You already made Angela look like a villain. This is where you draw the line? You don't want to make her look worse? She already looks pretty bad to the casuals. Because you edited her, edited her into being a villain. So... Like... I don't know. I just, my gut tells me we're not going to get to the bottom of this. Like, best case scenario, after the season ends, or after, like, certain people who leave pre-jury, they start to talk about it, if they're allowed to. I think best case scenario, we might hear about this in detail in a couple of years.
but yeah, uh, like I said, I think uh, I think Angela's just been trying to make herself the target. Like they probably still want Lisa out, but they might just get to a point where they're just like, let's cut our losses and get rid of Angela. And on her way out, she will reveal everyone who was in the collective and reveal that Quinn has a power. That's what I think is going to happen with Quinn's power. I think it's going to be found out. I mean, once Lisa does not use her power that everyone thinks she has, but once she doesn't use it, they're going to be like, huh, maybe she didn't have a power. Or at least if Lisa leaves, then they're going to be like, wow, she definitely didn't have a power. So. Yeah, that's, again, that's all I could find, because just, the discourse is just around, well, okay, I'll try Hamster Watch, but the discourse is just around how they keep cutting the feeds anytime Angela is even brought up. Okay. Um, t -Core is worried about Kenny winning HOH. She wants Kimo to pitch an alliance of t -Core, Kimo, Kenny, and Lisa. Kimo states that Kenny is very loyal. That would be an interesting group right there. So it probably won't happen. Yeah, they're just they're talking about Bringing Kenny into an alliance. Sorry, just staring at a gif of Lisa, like, trying to open a bottle of peanut butter, maybe? Or, wait, is she, like, using a mortar and pestle? I don't even know. Lisa's so weird, dude. <laughs> 